on show this Monday morning is the kindness of God's King. There's a verse from 2 Samuel 8, 15, that we looked at on Friday actually. David reigned over all Israel, administering justice and righteousness for all his people. And you get to chapter 9 and you see the kindness flow out in a particular act towards one that you might have assumed would have been the enemy of King David. 2 Samuel 9 verse 1, David asked, is there anyone remaining from the family of Saul that I can show kindness to for Jonathan's sake? Now, just reflect on that for a moment. Uh, at first, it feels surprising that David is not about wiping out the, the family of his rival Saul. Rather, he wants to show kindness. Um, in Saul's eyes, David had become his most bitter enemy. Saul's son Ishbosheth had become David's rival after Saul's death. And it might have been expected that David would be thinking after Ishbosheth's death that he might need to or want to wipe out the remaining of the remaining members of Saul's family so there's no more threat to his rule. But that is not David's motive, that's not David's thinking at all. Now, many years earlier, and to be honest, I'd forgotten this, John Woodhouse reminded me. David had made a promise to Saul and another promise to his son Jonathan. Um, Saul was trying to kill David and um, uh, was hunting David. And David got right up close to Saul uh, and David spared Saul's life. And 1 Samuel 24, verse 20, Saul says to David, Now I know for certain you'll be king and the kingdom of Israel will be established in your hand. Therefore swear to me by the Lord that you will not cut off my descendants or wipe out my name from my father's family. David swore to Saul, and Saul went back home, and David and his men went up to the stronghold. Well, there's a promise from David to Saul. Here's the promise from David to Jonathan. 1 Samuel 20, verse 14. Jonathan, if I continue to live, this is Jonathan speaking, if I continue to live, show me kindness from the Lord. But if I die, don't ever withdraw your kindness from my household, not even when the Lord cuts off every one of David's enemies from the face of the Lord. Um, Jonathan asks David to be kind and um, uh, Saul also asks David not to wipe off my family from the face of the earth. Now David, he reaches a position where his enemies are on the back foot, where he's living at peace with the enemies and we're in a situation where David has the opportunity to fulfill the promises that he made to Saul and Jonathan. Let's read. Uh, 2 Samuel 9 verse 2 there was a servant of Saul's family named Ziba they summoned him to David and the king said to him are you Ziba? I am your servant he replied so the king asked is there anyone left of Saul's family that I can show the kindness of God to um, he said to the king there is still Jonathan's son who was injured in both feet the king asked where is he? he answered the king you'll find him in Lodabar at the house of Machir son of Amiel so David had him brought from the house of Machir, son of Amiel, in Lodabar. Mephishbosheth, son of Jonathan, son of Saul, came to David, fell face down and paid homage. David said, Mephishbosheth, I am your servant, he replied. Don't be afraid, David said to him, since I intend to show you kindness for the sake of your father Jonathan. I'll restore you uh, all your grandfather Saul's fields and you'll always eat meals at my table. Now, in the passage I've just read, three times the term for kindness or covenantal love is used to describe David's intention towards Mephishbosheth. Uh, the first one, is there anyone remaining? This is verse 1, from the family of Saul I can show kindness to. In verse 3, the king asked, is there anyone left of Saul's family I can show the kindness of God to? In verse 7, don't be afraid, David said to Mephishbosheth, since I intend to show you kindness. Now I just want to note that that kindness to the disabled Mephishbosheth um, and I'm going to follow here a, a helpful article that Sam Wan gave me by, um, by Thompson on Mephishbosheth. Um, back in 2 Samuel 5, when David came to conquer Jerusalem, there was ex an expression, the blind and lame won't come into my house. Um, and the context back in chapter 5 was that, Je that the Jebusites, who at the time were holding Jerusalem, were taunting David. They mocked him and they said, um, you'll never get in here, even blind and lame can defend this place. And his response actually was hateful. He names them as blind and lame, as afflicted, as weak and helpless, who are unfit to be warriors, easily defeated. Hence the saying, blind and lame shall not come into the house. The Jebusites would be excluded from Jerusalem. Uh, but the reference here in 2 Samuel 9 to Mephishbosheth as lame 
reminds us as readers, well, he's from the family of Saul, against which God has turned. Some of the family of Saul have been killed. Michael has become barren. And Mephishbosheth has been made lame. He'll never be Israel's king. Um, and it would have seemed, on face value, there was no place for a person like Mephishbosheth in David's kingdom. But Mephishbosheth is in Jerusalem, in the king's house, at the king's table, treated as one of the king's sons. David's embrace of covenantal kindness has overcome any covenantal cursing. He's offered a hospitality to one who would otherwise have been excluded, um, who would have been dealt with as an enemy. And it's a marvelous display of grace. And it teaches us the character of God, the character of the kingdom of God. And actually, again, we'll eventually we see in Jesus. Um, that grace, that forgiveness of Jesus to those who've been his enemies. I was thinking of 1 Timothy 1.15 where the Apostle Paul says, here's a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world, the son of David, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the worst. I'm the worst of enemies of God. But Christ Jesus came in to save sinners. For that very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Father God, we just thank you for this display of grace that we've seen from David to the descendant of Saul, Mephishbosheth, um, that you display grace to your enemies. And we think of the moments that we have been uh, displayed enmity to you and ask that you would forgive us, uh, reconcile us to yourself. And we thank you for the forgiveness that is available to us in Jesus. Amen. Thanks so much for joining us this Monday morning, Daily Bible Time. And remember, every day we're at villagechurch.sydney slash live. 